August, clean track now. Stenhouse is falling off. Time to go. By half. He's been moving up. Yeah, me. This is hilarious. Still right with you. White flag. Yeah, boys. Caution's out. Check and flag. Martin Truex. Him and Chastain went for it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Cross the line again. He's driving in that. How about you, Chase Elliott? Man, thank you guys so much. Let's enjoy it. Y'all deserve one for a long time. Yeah, buddy. Way to dig in there today. Great effort. Appreciate y'all. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Studio 3. It's the preview show. I'm Kim Kuhn alongside Alan Kavana. Talladega in the rearview mirror. We have our sight set on Dover Motor Speedway. We go from one beast of a track size-wise <laughs> to a different monster intensity-wise. Dover, lots to look forward to. I love it. The Monster Mile, the trophy, one of the most coveted in all of NASCAR because it's just so cool. You get a trophy with your little car in there. We all want to win that one. And a guy that's very much probably looking forward to Dover Motor Speedway is Kyle Busch. He is on a hot streak. There are three drivers who have set themselves apart this season, 10 races in with multiple wins. And Kyle Busch just did that with his win at Talladega. I think he could be a championship favorite. Absolutely, he's got the wins already. And we saw what he did last week for, for him in Talladega. It allows them to take risks. Now they're going to another track where he's very good and can take even more risks. He's got three wins there, but get this, 21 top 10s. 21 times he's finished in the top 10. And we can't forget last year in the first race there with the next gen car, he led the most laps. Kyle Busch, the eight team, RCR, they are rolling early on in this season, absolute championship favorite. I love that you mentioned RCR and kind of the resurgence. We really haven't seen a lot from them in the last decade oh, plus. No. You know, you look at the win column after Kevin Harvick left in 2013, they had four wins total up until last year. And then the last year and a half between Tyler Reddick and Kyle Busch, that eight car has won five times. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I think Kyle Busch is a championship favorite. You should not be surprised if come playoffs, the end of playoffs, he's in that championship four. Yeah, old Rowdy is back. You're thinking the eight car. I'm thinking the nine car. Chase Elliott, still a lot of work to do. Look, it's been two races since he's been back. Pretty good, right? He's not really showing any sign of that injury really hurting him at all. But Dover is one you have to believe they have circled on the schedule only because he is so good there. Chase Elliott, this is one of his best tracks, and he has to win to make the playoffs. That comes with a little pressure, right? If you're missing some of these opportunities, you have to believe you they get it done now and get everything else behind them. Each week that goes by, they don't have that checkered flag. It's a little more pressure. It's a little more pressure. And Chase Elliott, can't forget, he won last year this next-gen race. So, so many eyes will be on him and the Hendrick Speed to get it done because they have to if he wants to get in that playoff and win the championship. And they probably are looking for a repeat of last year because Dover was his first win last year before going on to do a five-win season. However, you look at last year, mm. they really only have a minuscule amount of notes when it comes to Dover. We only raced there once now, and so the Next Gen car debuted there last year. Is that a detriment to the team? It, it might be. I mean, you ask these teams. I bet even if you ask HMS, can you look back to last year's notebooks? They would say no. So much changes with these next gen cars, with the notes, with all the data that they gather. So much changes in just a month. Heck, it's been a year since we've been to Dover and there's no other track like Dover. So teams are really doing a lot of sim testing, a lot of shaker rig testing, they call it. Just trying to figure out what they can do with all the data they've collected over the past year. But it is a challenge because that notebook is so thin. How much can say the nine team take from last year's win? We'll see on Sunday. You know, crew chiefs will tell you they want a thick notebook. They <laughs> want a lot of information to prepare them for the race weekend. I don't think it matters at Dover. This race, this track is so intense, not only on the durability of the cars, but the durability and the toughness of the drivers. It is mentally and physically hard on them. So notebooks aside, I think it's going to be a tough one. And that lack of knowledge, you wonder if that favors the veteran drivers. You wonder if that favors the bigger teams. Does this allow a team like a, dark, a smaller team or the dark horses like we saw in Talladega last week. Is Dover that type of track? I'm not so sure. We saw a little bit last year. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Mm, finished yes. second. Eric Jones was in the top 10. I'll give you a name. Chris mm. Buescher. Chris Buescher was okay. in the top 10 last year at Dover. RFK, Brad Keselowski, Chris Buescher this year running so much better. Maybe they can be a dark horse in Dover. Okay, you're mentioning some obvious names when you're talking <laughs> dark horses. Maybe a not so obvious. Do we consider SHR at this point a dark horse? 
Three out of the four, I'll give you. Okay. Maybe Dark Horses. Kevin Harvick's the man, though, at Dover. Oh, he is. Three wins there. And if you look at his laps led column since he joined SHR, Dover, the top of that list. I'm looking at Kevin Harvick. Priest, I still want to see big things from him. He feels like he's overreaching a little bit. Chase Briscoe, though, on a little bit of a hot streak. He's got three consecutive top five finishes. Eric Amarola, I know he wants to win there. He has said this is one of the tracks he wants to win most, but you have to go all the way back to 2015 to find a top five finish there for Eric Amarola. So I'm with you. I think Kevin Harvick might have a good shot here this weekend, but the other three are almost dark horses to me. Yeah, I'm wondering about Chase Briscoe. That broken finger has fixed his season. It's weird how we think about that because he's on a run. We'll see what he can do in Dover. We always look back on the preview show, NASCAR 75th season. We look back at one of the cooler moments in NASCAR's history. We cover a lot of races. We cover a lot of wins. We've never covered a qualifying lap. That's what we're doing this week, Kim. Go okay. back to two, right. 2006, qualifying at Dover. Jimmy Johnson spinning down the front stretch and hitting absolutely nothing, Kim, nothing. We've been to Dover. It's so narrow there. He had absolutely nothing. How do you do that? I don't know, because when you <laughs> spin out at Dover, you are bound to hit something. My favorite part, though, Jeff Gordon, watching his teammate. He throws his arms up, cheering for Jimmy, because again, Jimmy, kept it clean. Good stuff. You know when you impress Jeff Gordon, you've done something right. Absolutely. <laughs> We're hoping to be impressed this weekend with all the action at Dover Motor Speedway. Don't forget to tune in to the Worth 400, April 30th, 2 p.m. Eastern on FS1. And we'll be right back here on the preview show. She's Kim. I'm Alan. We will see you then.